What's up YouTube? In this lesson we're going to keep talking about arrays. We're going to talk about the push, pop, shift and unship methods of arrays. And we're going to also talk about the set interval function in JavaScript. Um, let's see what we got here. So we're starting out with an array. We've seen this before. We're writing out our array and then we're going to run the pop method of the array. Okay, and whatever this returns, we're going to store it in var1. So remember that we said earlier that arrays are actually objects um, in JavaScript, and objects have their properties and their methods. So this is one of the methods of arrays, it's the pop method. So what this is going to do is it's going to take off the last element in the array and it's also going to return a value. And what it's going to return is the one that it took off. So it's doing two things at once. It's taking off uh, the last element from the, the original array and it's going to return that and we can store that in a variable. So you see I stored it here and then we're going to output it here. Okay. So you can see what that did here. Uh, the F is gone now. Uh, it took off the last element of the array and it returns it and I just output that there. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. Let's keep going. Um, here's the push method of the array. So what you can see here is here I took off the F and here um, I pushed on a new value onto the end of the array. Okay, so what I gave it was uh, I pushed on a new string here. The string says pushed. And what this one returns is it's going to return to us um, the new length of the array. So here we can see we have six elements now and it's going to return that. So here I stored it in var2 and then I output it. Uh, so that, that also does two things, but here it returns the one it took out and here it returns um, the new array length. Let's keep going. Uh, these ones are very similar. So shift, uh, what shift does is it takes the first element off the array and it also returns that. It returns the one it took off. I stored it in var3 um, so it's very similar to pop, except it works on the front of the array. I bet you can guess what unshift is going to do. So here uh, we're, we're, we're unshifting or we're moving a new element onto the front of array. And I put a string at the, in the first element there. And this one also returns the length. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Um, the push method can take multiple parameters. So if I want to push on uh, three elements onto the end of the array, I can do that. And that's just what I've done right here. Let's take a look at that. So here you can see I've pushed these three things onto the back of the array and it still returns. And now it, well, it returns uh, the new array length, which is nine now. Unshift, very unsurprising. So here I gave it three parameters and they were put onto the front of the array here. Okay, so um, yeah, pretty pretty simple stuff. And um, one thing you may be wondering was is um, well, okay, if we can unshift, you know, uh, three elements onto the front of the array, well, can we can we take off three elements? Uh, with shift or can we take off three elements off the end with pop and we have to you we can't do that um, pop and shift can only take off one element uh, we have to use another function called splice to take off multiple elements off the array or like a chunk of the array um, but we're not going to look at that in this lesson okay let's go to the next thing so here, um, this should be index 2 right here, but I'm not going to show you just yet. Uh, we're going to take a look at the code first and try to figure out what's going on. So we create a new array here, array 2. And um, now we're going to look at the set interval function. So the set interval function is like a timer in JavaScript. And right here, you know, it takes two parameters. And this one is um, how many millis, like, how many milliseconds for each interval? Okay, so I have 600 milliseconds here, okay, which is less than a second. So every 600 milliseconds, 
we're going to run this function pop array and that is going to happen indefinitely until the end of time uh, unless we use this clear interval uh, function here so basically what's happening here is uh, we're doing this set interval we're telling it to do pop array function every 600 seconds and actually this whole thing can return a value and it's going to return a unique value that we don't need to care about to this clear on zero okay so when I want to stop this from going until the end of time um, I'm going to run this clear interval function here and I'm going to pass in this variable which holds the value returned from this I'm going to pass in here so now clear interval function knows uh, which interval we want to stop okay so let's look at this pop array function um, a little bit deeper so right now we can see that our array length is 5 okay so we're saying if this array length is greater than 0 then we're gonna pop one off the end of the array and then we're gonna write out the array let's take a look at it okay um, when is this else when is this else block gonna be run well it's gonna be run when array length is actually 0 Okay, so it's going to go from 5 to 4 to 3 to 2 to 1, and then it's going to, and finally it's going to be, well, is 1 greater than 0? Yes, it is. So then we're going to pop the last one off the array, and we're going to write that out, okay, which is going to be nothing. It's going to be uh, blank space, okay? And then once, and then we're going to go around again, okay, is 0 greater than 0? No, it's not. So we're going to go into the else statement and then we're going to write out the length of it and this pushing next thing okay after that we're clearing the interval uh, this this one right here and we're going to go to the next function and then we're going to start pushing and all of these are very similar so um, in a nutshell what's happening is we're starting out with five and then we're popping until the array goes to zero elements and then we're going to push on five elements onto the empty array and then we're going to unshift five more elements onto the front of the array so then our array is going to have ten values in it and finally we're going to shift five values off the front of the array and what we're going to be left with is our initial array so it's going to be put back to how it was Okay. Okay, I think that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so um, let's take a look at it. Oops, put in my two. Unshifting onto the front, and finally shifting off the front. Okay, and finally we're left with our original array. So let's just take a quick look at this, at what happened here. So remember, we started off with five elements on our array. We popped one off, and then we output it. That's why we don't see the five here. Okay, we popped one off, then we, we, we output the array, kept going to one. And remember, when okay, if one was greater than zero, yes, one's greater than zero. We popped that off. Now the array has nothing in it. Now we write out the array, which has nothing in it. That's why we have uh, a little bit of a space there. Okay. Uh, next thing we do, okay, and then we we have proof, okay, that it's zero. Okay. We check the length here, right? I didn't write this zero. It's calculating the length. It's zero. The next thing we push, we push a one onto the back. Then we push a two onto the back. We push a three, all the way to five. Uh, once. Okay, 5 is not smaller than 5, so we have to go to the else statement, and then we do our unshifting, put the 6 on the front, put the 7 on the front, and so on, and then finally taking, you know, taking off the 10, taking off the 9, taking off the 8, um, until we're left with our initial array. Okay, um, that's all I want to talk in this one, and in the next one I think we'll talk about uh, splicing and slicing. So see you then.